Welcome into Phil's Tax Hacks and Other Retirement Facts with CPA and Personal Financial Specialist, Phil Putney. Now let's get rolling with today's show. Hey everybody, welcome into Phil's Tax Hacks and Other Retirement Facts as Phil and I talk investing, finance, and retirement. You got me a new setup if you're checking us out on YouTube. I changed yeah. my studio space uh, yet again. Uh, so we have some fun doing that. What's going on, buddy? How are you? I'm doing great. Yeah. How about you? Yeah, I like the new setup. It looks good. Yeah, I'm in a closet. So yeah, that's, right. that's what I heard. Your wife threw you in the closet. Said, All right. She kicked me into the closet. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I, I turned this uh, in my in my recording space. I just turned this extra room I had for a vocal production. I thought, you know what? It's nice and cozy. Uh, it'll probably sound better. I've got all this acoustic foam in here. So since I do so many radio and podcast shows, I thought, why not? So sure. Absolutely. It looks pretty good. So I thought, Hey, we'll do that. So we'll knock this out this way. Now I'm going to paint my wall green just to match yours. I think that's right. We have to, to match now, you know, Yeah, good stuff. So <laughs> you doing all right. Having a good week. Doing good. Doing good. Looking forward to the holiday weekend. So one, right. one last hurrah before we get into the fall season. So mm -hmm. Yeah, this is going to be our Labor Day, uh, basically posting. Yep. I know this will be after Labor Day, so part, pardon me. We'll have had yep. Labor Day. We, we, we'll have already had Labor Day by then. That's by, right. But, so yeah. Hope it was a good one. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, well, so let's talk some red flags. Then we're gonna. Uh, I've got. All right. Got to get used to this monitor. I got one way over here. So let's talk about spotting some red flags in our uh, finances as we uh, are getting, you know, getting to these different stages and stuff. And I guess sure. just like, uh, you know, Labor Day, if you were outside cooking cooking your hamburgers, you might want to look for some red flags, right? Like if you uh, didn't get the hamburger all the way through, or you've always got that one guest, right? Who wants a hockey puck. And then the yep. other guest yep. who wants it like as, as rare as possible. They, they want it to move, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you got to make sure you don't switch them. Right. Cause then they're like, Hey, wait a minute. So, you know, that kind of stuff. So let's talk about a few of these things here. Um, can you name all the investments in your portfolio folks? That's a good question. Like I would yep. imagine if you can, like you must pay way too much attention to this. And I was going to say, yeah, if, if that's the case, there's probably one or two scenarios that, that fit your, you know, what you're talking about, which aren't necessarily good. Number one, you don't have many right. options in you know, okay. your portfolio, so you're not diversified enough. Okay, great know? point. Yeah. Or, yeah, you're just paying you're way too much attention too to much. it. It's, yeah. It, it, yeah. So. And it can't be, that can't be good for us, right? No. No, I mean, it, it's, especially as you enter retirement, you know, it, I always work with clients that um, like to enjoy what they like to do in retirement. You know, right. now I'm not saying never look at it. You've got to pay attention to what's going on. You know, you need to do your own due diligence, even sure. if you're working with an advisor, you know, but at the end of the day, you can be obsessed with it, especially as markets shift and we go through, you know, ups and downs and it can drive you crazy right. unless you understand how and why it's positioned and you've got a plan. So. But yeah, so if you know all the investments in your portfolio, probably not not a good thing necessarily for those two reasons. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, you either have the diversification or paying way too much attention. And, and so somebody might say, well, you know, what's wrong with paying attention? And there's nothing wrong with it if it's really yeah. your thing. But is that really like the best use of your time that you really want to do in retirement? Like, do you want to spend all your time focusing on stuff like that? So, right. Just kind of you know, checks and balances for what is ideal for you yep. in retirement. And yeah, that's a great point that you made about if you can name them all and you only have like four things, you know, maybe you're not diversified. So uh, yep. that's our first one. Uh, another red flag could be, you know, how often, Phil, do you talk or should you talk with your advisor? I talk to so many guys all across the country and I get different responses mm -hmm. from a lot of these, but it seems th there's some there's some fairly uniformity, I think, to a lot of people, but what's really a good target for that? Is it truly an individual basis or is the once a year thing adequate? I mean, it really is an individual basis. So we, we meet with our clients at least once a year. You know, we're doing Roth conversions. We got a plan we're following. So we get together at least once a year for that. But I mean, the reality is we're meeting with clients more often than that for a lot of different reasons, you know, or communicating with some fashion. I mean, there's something that's come up in their, their life. And I always tell them, look, don't wait for that annual meeting. I mean, if something comes up, yeah, let me know. Hit let me, me know up, then. Yeah. yeah let's, let's see if there's things, you know, we need to change or, or you just have a question anytime. Let me know. Yeah. Um, you know, don't wait till the end of the year to say, Oh yeah, let me tell you what happened this year. You know, maybe there was things that we could have positioned and done a little bit better had we known and, you know, helped you through that process. 
you know, and then we do tax returns with most of our clients, tax preparation and, and review. Right. So, you know, they're, so yeah, we're formally, I guess, if you want to put it that way, we meet with everyone once a year to go through the plan and make sure on track and do that kind of a formal process. But um, right. it, it's generally three, four times a year, kind of depending on the client and the scenario. Okay. And I think that's really comes to me. That's that great benefit of working with an advisor uh, and building that relationship, you know, especially with somebody, even if you've moved away or, or you wind up having a remote client, you know, or mm-hmm. whatever, you can still do this, right? You can still do yes. this Zoom thing and have conversations, but like, you can't call up if you're doing the robo thing, or even sometimes the big brokerage thing, if right. you're just doing everything through um, xyz.com, right? You can't really get that personal thing going on. So you can come in and you can do the once a year meeting and blah, blah, blah. But yep. like if something comes up and, you know, I say, I call you up and say, Hey, Phil, you know, my daughter is getting married and she wants to make it a destination wedding. I'm freaking out, you know, help me figure out how we're going to pay for this. And how's that going to change things? You know, you're there to give me that, uh, you know, that sounding board back and forth right. and talk through it. And that's really the key is, is, you know, being that sounding board and then kind of walking back to the plan to say, okay, that's great. Well, let's see where are we on track? Do we, you know, can we fit that in? You know, what kind of a budget, if, if it's not something we've already talked about and put into the plan from a, a budgeted standpoint. Mm-hmm. And that's really one of the bigger benefits of an advisor is helping you through that, you know, giving that sounding board, Conversation goes you know, along walking you through the plan. And, and a lot of times working with clients on it, I mean, it helps them be more informed, make a right decision. Yeah. You know, not that we're giving them, this is what you should do, but just have that discussion back and forth. And, and it helps them come to the, what ends up being the right decision for them. At yeah. least they go into that decision knowing all the facts. And that's really, if your advisor is doing his role or her role, I mean, that's what they should be you know, telling you is giving you the facts so that you can make a decision because it's your retirement at the end of the day. I'm not going to tell you don't go to the, you know, oh, yeah, you can't afford that. Don't do your daughter, you know, daughter's destination wedding. Right. Right. Okay. Well, look at, here's the, you know, here's the reality. You need an extra 50 grand. It's not something we plan for. Can you do it? Sure. The money's there. We weren't planning on taking the money out this year. Just understand long-term. I mean, this is the potential effect. So let's it, maybe it, change some things uh, in our later buckets or whatever, so we can hopefully right. recoup that. Right. Yeah. So it's just a matter of understanding where it fits and yeah. Versus just going and doing it and, you know, I'll yeah, this it. is what I did this year. <laughs> yeah, I did a thing and we'll do yeah, it. I, I did a thing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, is it a red flag, Phil, if our accounts are moving up and down? Maybe this used to be a red flag, but today is it, I mean, like, how do we judge it? Because the volatility, like yeah. on our last show uh, last week, you know, I, I popped up a graphic that we were talking, you were talking about, look at the S&P over the last 50, 60 years. And yeah. you saw it was real slow. And then, and then it just thousands. It was like, you know, like a heart monitor. Yep. Yeah. I mean, uh, your, your investments moving up and down, is it a bad thing? Not necessarily. I mean, obviously it comes back to risk and, and understanding what you're comfortable with. I mean, it, it can be a bad thing if, if it keeps you up at night, right? If, if sure. that's your concern, oh, I just can't handle it because Maybe number one, it's back to the point number one, you're just looking at it too much. You don't pay that much attention. Things change day in and day out. That doesn't necessarily change your plan. And, and the plan should have built in the understanding that, yeah, there is going to be the volatility. Mm-hmm. You know, with risk and, and growth potential for a long term, you're going to have some volatility. You, you need to expect that. Yeah. Just understand how it's going to affect you. You know, especially when we've talked several times about that bucket type concept. In our later bucket, you're going to have more volatility. That's just how investing works long term. Doesn't necessarily affect you because we're not going to touch it for 10 or more years. You know, yeah. so again, it, back to the discussion with your advisor, you know, make sure he or she knows. I mean, if that's something you're just not comfortable with, then maybe investing this way isn't the right way. There are other options. You have to change some stuff. Yeah. But I mean, right. it is natural, especially in the environment that we've been in for the last bit. Yeah. So, and in, in it's not going to get any better. It is not right? going to I mean, go any better. That's right. Technology is growing every day. People, you know, computer-based investing. I mean, it just creates a lot of volatility and movement in markets. So. Okay. Uh, another red flag number four. Uh, how much do you need to maintain the lifestyle that you currently have going into retirement? If you don't know, is that a red flag? Yeah, absolutely. 
You know, I mean, it, there's, there's the old adage, if you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there. Well, it's kind of the same thing here. I mean, you've got to have an understanding of what is it I'm you know, going to need? What's that quote unquote budget, if you want to think of it that way, for retirement, my income spending plan. Spending plan, Phil. Spending, oh, they're, they're spending plan. And we're going to relabel it. That's right. Yeah. You know, but yeah, it, it's key. You have to understand that because number one, does it work? You know, yeah. do you have enough money to, to make it all work? But then, I mean, that's where you have to start to then start to layer the pieces in to say, okay, well, I need a hundred thousand a year, whatever your number is, you know, okay, well, I've got social security. I might have a pension. And so now I've got a gap. Well, where's that going to come from and how is that money positioned? And yeah, so it, it's the, the basic Big part that. of a plan you have to have. Yeah. yeah. So if you don't know, you know, again, that's, that's the point of getting a plan together is so that you have some of these knowns, right? Yep. Uh, walking around with all this uncertainty and, you know, Hey, 2021, man, 2020, 2021. It, there's been a lot of uncertainty. <laughs> a lot of uncertainty. So we're, we're starting to figure out how to get used to it, but it's why add on to and compound it in the areas we can work on. And this is an area right. we can work on, you know, and that that's really, you know, the way you got to look at it is, is, the spending plan or that understanding, don't think of it as a constraint. Cause I, I yeah. think that's why a lot of people are hesitant to doing it. And it's like, well, I, you know, you can't put me in a box in retirement. Sure, I, yeah, you know, yeah. I, I don't well, know what it's going to come up in. Right, yeah. you know, that's right. You can't put me in a box like Mark's in, you know, right. but, but I mean, it, you need that. You need to, to at least understand, does it work? You know? And then one of the discussions oh, we always have with clients is, okay, you, you have that and hopefully the plan works great and you end up, mathematically it accumulates and, and you have more than enough to make it through your lifetime. Yeah. You know, and then we also have the discussion when we're looking at that is, and I always call it the guardrail, so to speak of, okay, well, here's the maximum you could spend mm -hmm. every single year throughout retirement and still potentially not run out of money. And our version of running out is you still got about five years left of assets left, That's you know? So again, it, it really comes down to just understanding the parameters. Okay. So we're going through these red flags and then we've got a couple. I've got one more here and this is a kind of a good one. So as you're listening to the vo this folks or, or watching it, if somebody asks you to explain or describe your financial plan, could you do it? How many people can say, yeah, yep. you know? Yep. That's a good point. And I mean, not just describe it, but where is it? Do you have it? Is it written down somewhere? Yeah. You know, um, retirement is one of those things. You can't just have an idea. Yeah, it starts with an idea. <laughs> construct, right. You get the, <laughs> right, right. I kind of go from there. I, I, you know, we talk rules of thumb and we talk about these yep. different things. And I don't know if I ever dropped this one or not, but uh, I, an advisor told me this one years ago, the rule of 11. Did I share that one with you? I don't think so. No. So he's, he said the rule of 11, and this, I don't know if he made, I'm assuming he made this up. It's like, if you can't explain it and it makes sense to an 11 year old, your retirement okay. is too complicated. Yep. Yep. I thought that was interesting. Maybe that's a little too simplistic, but maybe not. Yeah. I mean, you have to, the reality is retirement complex. I mean, there's, there are a lot of moving pieces, so but you, you have to have a plan that you can, it, right? Right. Yep. Right. And understand, well, here's where we're at and, and what we're going to do, because depending on, you know, what you've decided with social security your pensions and other things, I mean, it's going to change year over year where you're at. I mean, if you're delaying social security, where you're going to need more upfront. We're still keeping the same level of spending, but from yeah. your assets, you're spending more. And that's a different investment strategy now to make that happen versus we're going to take Social Security today, kind of that more fixed. And, and I know what that gap is. Yeah. So, true. I mean, I, to me, talking about the plan, this is how I generally present it to clients is it's like you're going to take a, a trip around the United States. You're going to see all the national parks, right? Okay. I'm retired. That's my goal. I want to go see every. Yeah. I'm going to go see every national park. Okay, that's great. Well, what are you going to do to do that? You're not just going to jump in the car and start driving because if you do, you're never going to see them because you didn't make reservations, right? You're not going to get into the parks. And so you've got to plan this out, right? Plan yeah, it out, make reservations. Yeah, the, just meandering yep. will not get you through the goal. Right. See what the costs are, plan it to, you know, so you understand all the ins and outs and how long is it going to take and am I going to be able to see what I want and then just start doing it. That's the plan. Now, I guarantee once you start down that path, it's going to change, right? You're going to, things are going to happen. You're going to have a flat tire. Things are going to come up. Yeah. You're going to see things or, you know, along the way that, oh, here's that big ball of yarn. I wanted to always see that, you know, and I didn't put it <laughs> I in my plan. Say, the ball is, of wax you know? is closed and you can't, you got to change. Yeah. 
You know, so, I mean, there's a lot of things, but that's at the, the end of the day, you have to have the plan. So, you know, does it work? How much is it going to cost? All those questions get answered and then just start moving down that path. Then things happen and, and modify the plan along the way. Yep. And if you don't have an answer to some of these questions or you don't have really a clue about what you're trying to do, well, obviously that's a huge red flag. Yep. And again, you know, maybe that's simplistic way of saying, if you can't explain it to an 11 year old, maybe that's too simplistic, but at the same time, that's why you work with an advisor. Right. They can handle the heavy lifting. They're handling the complicated minutia. You, you know, and that, you know, if you're talking to, um, you know, whomever that might be, you're trying to let your kids know, Hey, this is what we've put together. This is what I'm doing. You know, these, even if these are grown people, you're being able yep. to explain that in a, in a simple, efficient way so that everybody gets it. Everybody's on the same page. And then you don't have to really think and worry and stress about it. You just know it's there and it's doing its job. So right. that's our podcast this week. So if you've got some red flags or you've got some questions that might lead or lack of questions, lack of answers that lead to a red flag, then make sure you check with a qualified professional like Phil. As always, don't forget to subscribe to us on all the different platforms. You can find it all at philstaxhacks.com. That's philstaxhacks.com. And we'll see you next time here on the podcast. Thanks for hanging out, buddy. I appreciate it. No problem. Take care. We'll catch you next time, folks. Stay safe. Stay sane. We'll see you later on Phil's Tax Hacks and other retirement facts. Phil? Investment advisory services offered through AFS Wealth Management. The content of this program is provided for informational purposes only and is not a solicitation or recommendation of any investment strategy. Investments and or investment strategies involve risk, including the possible loss of principal. There is no assurance that any investment strategy will achieve its objectives.